Today I'm going to show you how to get your oxygen tank to connect to your ozone generator. And then from there we're going to get into exactly how to set these up, taking this regulator and putting it onto the oxygen tank as well as disconnecting it. So the first thing I wanna get into is the two primary forms of oxygen tanks. Regardless of the size, all oxygen tanks in the United States are gonna be either a 540 industrial oxygen tank or an 870 oxygen tank. This one requires a prescription, while this one does not. So most people are using this. If you already have an 870 oxygen tank, great, go ahead and utilize it. But most people are getting the 540 oxygen tank because it's much easier to acquire. So the size of the tank actually does not make a difference in which type of oxygen tank regulator you need. It's the fitting. So this one would be 540, which would fit to all sizes of 540 oxygen tanks. This one would be 870, which would fit to all oxygen tanks that are an 870 fitting. So is there a difference in purity between these oxygen tanks because you're trying to produce ultra pure ozone? Well, the answer is no. Both are rated for 99.9% .9 oxygen. This one does require a prescription. So if you already have one, great. It is a bit harder to get does require a prescription, but this is 99.9% .9 oxygen. But so is this. The difference with this is that it is a industrial oxygen. You can go and get this from places such as Air Gas, Praxair, or just searching local weld supply shop. So how do you end up getting one of these two oxygen tanks? Well, like I said, this one requires a prescription. So you'd have to go to a physician, get a prescription for reasonable use. A lot of people you know, have prescriptions for oxygen tanks for say migraines. From there, you'll go to a local oxygen supply with your prescription and purchase an oxygen tank. A lot of times they like to rent it out. So it might be on a rent basis. Ideally, you just purchase it outright because with ozone, you're not utilizing a lot of oxygen at once. So an oxygen tank like this can last anywhere from six to 12 months, depending on the usage. So while this one needs the prescription, this one does not need a prescription. This is 540 industrial oxygen. All you have to do is go into a oxygen supply store and say, hey, I need a size R, as in Roy, oxygen tank. This is a 40 cubic foot oxygen tank, which is what most people use in conjunction with ozone. And so all you have to do is look up air gas, Prax air, or local oxygen supply or weld supply in your Google, find one near you, go into the store. It might be good to call ahead too, just to make sure that they do have the oxygen tanks that you're looking for. And then you wanna go in and ask for a size R or a 40 cubic foot oxygen tank. But it's really that easy. People kind of overcomplicate it. If they ask what it's for, you know, you can just say that you're utilizing it for an ozone purification system. But it's really quite simple. Most people get in intimidated with oxygen just because they're not used to it, but it's actually very simple to utilize. I would say this though, that if you are gonna be utilizing ozone, that it's good to have two oxygen tanks, one as a backup. The biggest thing that people do is they leave their oxygen tank on by accident, and then it drains out overnight. So you will need to then get a new oxygen tank. Whereas if you just have a backup, if you're able to get an extra one, that's really nice in case that does happen. So now I'm gonna show you how to connect the 540 regulator to the 540 oxygen tank. Again, the difference between the regulators that you'll find on our store is that there is a 540 fitting and an 870 fitting. The 540 is what goes to a tank that looks like this and it has a nut on it. And that's how you can tell it's a 540 oxygen tank regulator. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take the stem and insert it into the oxygen tank here. And then you'll notice there's this nut you're just gonna start twisting that onward until it's finger tight. And then you're gonna need a wrench, uh, a monkey wrench like this or something that you can tighten it down a little bit further. It doesn't need to be super tight, just enough to make sure that there's not gonna be air pressure leaking out of it. And no issues would be caused. You just hear a hissing sound if it's not tight enough. So if you do hear a hissing sound, just either tighten it a little bit more or disconnect it and try again. So now we have a fully assembled oxygen tank. As far as turning it on, there are two different ways that you need to turn this on in order to be able to use it with ozone. The first is this valve. What this valve does is this opens up the oxygen tank and allows it to go into the regulator right here. So in order to open it up, all you need to do is twist counterclockwise. You just need to do like half a turn. It doesn't need to be turned uh, a lot. Just half a turn will be substantial enough to get the oxygen pressure from here into the regulator. Now what the regulator is doing is it's not letting any oxygen come out of the tank yet until you adjust on the settings here. So this is the black knob on the side of the oxygen tank regulator. 
that allows you to adjust what's called the flow rate of the oxygen. The flow rate is just how fast the oxygen is coming out of the tank. So again, the two things that I've done is I've opened up my oxygen tank and now I have my oxygen tank regulator attached and no oxygen will be flowing out unless both of those things are open. The oxygen tank is open from here using the valve and then the regulator is set to something other than zero. For disassembling the 540 oxygen tank, I'm gonna do a similar thing. I'm gonna go ahead and close the valve on the top here. That means no oxygen is gonna be coming from the tank anymore, but there is still pressure built up in this oxygen tank regulator. So we're gonna do what's called bleeding the valve or bleeding the regulator. I turn my flow rate up, allow the oxygen to come out that's built up in here. And then what I'll see is I'll see this gauge slowly start to go down and then the hissing will stop. I no longer hear oxygen. Now I can take off this oxygen tank regulator. So I'm gonna take my wrench to get this off. Then I can just finger loosen off the rest of the way. And that's how you disassemble the 540 oxygen tank. And now I'm gonna show you how to connect the 870 regulator onto the 870 oxygen tank. This one is a bit easier. There are two prongs right on this regulator that you'll notice. And then on the oxygen tank, there are two holes. The two prongs go right into the two holes. And then this one just requires finger tightening. And then you just tighten that down. From there, this is the valve on the top. No oxygen is gonna be flowing until you do two things. The valve open and the knob on the regulator is set to anything other than zero. Then oxygen will be coming out. So what I do to open up this valve is I twist it. Some of them have what's called a toggle valve on top. So, so you might not need a little oxygen wrench like this. You'll just be able to use it with your fingers. But if you don't have one of those, you'll have to use what's called an oxygen wrench or just a standard wrench. Anything that you can find to open this up works just fine. So you should see the gauge on the regulator come up a little bit. So there's this pressure gauge on the regulator. What that is indicating to you is how full the oxygen tank is. So it's giving you a pressure reading on it. So uh, green means it's totally full. So when you get a new oxygen tank should be in the green up here red means that it's almost empty however there's some nuances to that that i'll explain in just a second here so the second piece from here is now that we've opened up the valve on top of the tank we have to actually change the flow rates on the regulator here in order for oxygen to start coming out and the flow rate again is just how fast oxygen flows out of the tank. All right, so for taking your regulator off, you're gonna do what is called bleeding the valve first. So we're gonna go ahead and close this top valve here. That means that we've closed the valve that allows the oxygen to escape from the generator, but there's still some pressure built up in the regulator. So all we have to do is turn up the flow rate and we should see that gauge go down into the red and then not hear any oxygen coming out anymore. From there, it's good to take the regulator off. So I'm just gonna take the regulator off. And that is how you disassemble the 870 oxygen tank. So again, the big recommendations here are go get the 540 oxygen tank. That's what most people use for ozone. You can go to Prax, Prax Air, Air Gas, local oxygen supply, local weld shop. Just go to Google, search one of those. Maybe call them in advance just to make sure that they do have the oxygen that you're looking for. You're going to ask for a size R oxygen tank, which is 40 cubic feet. And, and that's pretty much it. It's kind of like ordering a coffee. Just if you've never ordered coffee before, you might not know exactly how to do it. So that's how you set up the oxygen tanks and get your oxygen tanks to be ready for ozone.